boys and girls. Today we are going to start to create a folk art still life inspired by the artist Carrie Ambrosino. So what's folk art? Folk art is the art of every day and it has its traditions rooted in community and culture. Carrie Ambrosino is a folk artist inspired by Mexican art and you can see that in her beautiful colorful paintings that are filled with pattern and designs. She is our inspiration for our own folk art still life. A still life is a drawing or a painting of an arrangement of objects. Let's get started. To make your amazing collage, the first thing you're going to need to do is create the base for your still life. This is called a still life because the objects in the still life are sitting very still. That's why it's called a still life. Boys and girls, to create your still life, we're going to begin by creating the table. And we're going to use a variety of art supplies. And so therefore you could say that this work of art is mixed media. Another word for art supplies is media. And because we're mixing it up a little bit, we are using mixed media. So the first thing you're going to do is get four popsicle sticks. This will serve as the bottom of your collage. And you'll also need an envelope. The envelope is simply for us to keep our popsicle sticks in until the following art class. So on your envelope, Please go ahead and neatly write your name and your class or teacher code. Please, when you're done putting your popsicle sticks in your envelope, do not lick and seal your envelope. That's gross. I'd like to reuse these. Can't do it if you lick and seal them closed. So make sure you don't move this guy out of the way. And I'm going to color my sticks one at a time. And my goal today is not only to make them colorful, but also to have a pattern on them. So I'm going to use some of the principles of art. So one thing I'm definitely using is something called patterns. I'm going to scoot one out of the way. What I like to do is I like to pick a couple of colors that are light colors, light green, yellow, maybe a light pink color. And I like to color the stick in. So what I'm going to do first is just draw a couple of lines on my stick. And those are different places where I can add different colors on my stick. So I'm going to color this one a nice peach color. And I'm going to go ahead and color the different parts of my stick different colors now. my stick colored in and I use light colors in the background. Now I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to use dark colors for pattern. The reason I'm using dark colors is because you'll be able to better see them. This is called contrast. Contrast is also a principle of art. I'll make it so by using a contrasting color that's dark. I'll make it so you can see my patterns. You guys knew that a pattern is when a line or a shape repeats. So in this section, I think I'll do a pattern of stripes and notice how well you can see that dark blue because I used a contrasting color and I'm making it like a pattern. You don't have to do a pattern. You can draw whatever you like. It's just what I want to do for this particular stick. Your next stick can be something totally different. I think I'm now going to add some hearts. You know that lines or shapes that repeat create a pattern. If I really want to emphasize those hearts, I could even go back and trace over them. If you draw something on your stick that you don't like, you can just flip the stick over and try it again. But I'm kind of digging this design, so I'm gonna go ahead and finish this one off. As soon as you finish one stick so that you don't lose your stick, go ahead and place it in your envelope. That way you can keep track of all of them. When you're done with one stick, then you can do another one. Remember, as you work on your sticks, they don't have to be the same unless you want them to be. Start with light colors first in the background. 
could you don't have to create a pattern you could just make it completely one color or maybe a bunch of different colors light colors in the background dark colors to create your patterns so that they stand out Now that you're all finished and you have your sticks in your envelope, we need to work on the background, the part that is behind my still life. So for that, I'm going to go to the store and get a nice thick white board. And on the white side of the board, I'm going to go ahead and write my name and teacher code. Don't forget this because with everybody's masterpiece being created, yours can easily become lost. Turn this over and then what we're going to do is glue a piece of paper on it that we'd want for the background. You can get whatever color paper you want for your background. There's tons to choose from. Me, I think I'm gonna go with this blue right here. To put the background on, all you'll have to do is paint a little bit of glue around the edges, stick it on, and give it a, you guessed it, massage. So let me do that right now. finished with that, I can go ahead and take my sticks out and I need to decide how I want to lay them out on my work of art for my table. So when an artist is trying to figure out where they want to place things, this is called composition. So right now I'm trying to figure out my composition or placement of things in my work of art. I think I like that. I'm happy with that composition. Now here's the dealio with these sticks. They won't stick, the sticks won't stick, unless you add a nice line of glue. And even still, it might appear as if they aren't going to stick, but that's because they have to have enough grab time. So if your sticks start to slad, that is hard to say, sticks start to slad, don't you worry. It doesn't necessarily mean you did anything wrong. It's just that the glue needs a little bit of grab time, enough time for all of those sticks to do their job of sticking. So make sure you draw a nice line of glue across your stick and stack one stick right above the other. If you happen to get all of this finished, you've drawn and decorated your sticks, and you've done a beautiful job creating pattern, you've glued a piece of construction paper to the board, and you made sure to write your name on the back of the board, and then glued your sticks to that board, and you still have art time left, well, we are also creating a bigger version of this still life. We're going to work together.
each class is working together to create one large still life. When a group of artists work together, it's called a collaboration. So we are going to create a class collaboration still life. So if you finish this early and everything's glued, you can go ahead and place this in an area where it can dry and then you can get yourself a strip. It doesn't matter what color of paper you get, just get a color that you want to work with. This will be the base of our collaborative still life. So these large pieces of paper will basically be bigger versions of these sticks that you created. So get a piece of paper that you like the color. And once again, using Sharpies, you're going to be creating patterns. Now remember, when artists collaborate and they're all working together, everybody, it's like a team, like a sports team. Everybody is counting on each other. So when one person doesn't do their best, it reflects not so nicely on that team. So make sure when you're drawing your designs that you're doing your very best. You could always start with a large design and that would help to divide your paper up. And once you have your paper divided into smaller sections, then you can start to think about the different patterns you could put inside of each section. You can also use color, different colors for your design. Just remember that Sharpies are really good at drawing, but they're not great at filling in large areas. So you don't want to color a large space with a Sharpie. They're much better for drawing and coloring in smaller areas. So once you have your design divided into sections, then you can go ahead and create designs within those sections. And that's what I'm going to work on now. I wanted to add a little bit of color to mine, not just with Sharpie, but also with one of my favorite art supplies, construction paper crayons. They work great on construction paper, and I like to press really firmly, and that will give me a nice dark value. So think about how you can add with Sharpie or with construction paper crayons, different colors to your strip that will be added to our collaborative piece. Now that I've got my background glued down and I've created my table, now I can actually start working on my still life. So the first thing I need to do is decide what I want my vase to look like. Now, you don't have a lot of space right here. You're not working with much. So when you make your vase, you're going to need to make it kind of small. Most vases, if you were to draw a line down the middle, an invisible line, which we would call the line of symmetry, most vases are the same from one side to the other. That means they are symmetrical. I'm not talking about my whole composition because if you drew a line down my entire work of art, it is not the same on both sides. So you could say that my work of art is asymmetrical or not the same. However, my vase is the same from one side to the other. So to make a vase like that, it's very similar to doing it if you were going to make a paper heart. So we're gonna start by folding a piece of paper in half. Pick out a piece of paper that you think is going to make a beautiful vase, and the first thing you're going to do is fold this paper in half, just like you are making a paper heart. So I've got this folded right in half, and now that it's folded and I'm going to press down the crease. Now, this crease that I just squished, this is my line of symmetry. This is where I will be starting 
and ending the drawing of my vase. If you want to make a very simple vase, then all you need to do is draw a line. I'm gonna put a polka dot in the bottom middle, and then I could just draw a line that goes from the bottom middle up to there. This would be for a very simple vase. So I'm gonna draw a line from the bottom middle, top corner. Take my scissors, move those papers aside, and now I have a nice, simple face. If you want to make something a little bit fancier, so I'm going to set this one aside, I will again fold my paper in half, and now I can draw half of okay. I could start at the top and about the middle, and I'm going to make what's called the mouth of the vase, or the opening. And I have decided that I want the mouth of the opening of the vase to be about this big. Then I want it to come in, and then I'm going to make a line that comes down. This is the neck of the vase. Now that I've got that, I can create what's called the body of the vase, and I think I want the body to curve out. And when I get to the bottom, if I want the bottom to come back out a little bit again, that is called the foot. A little bit of practice. If you need to make a couple of vases until you get one that you are happy with, that's fine. You can also do the simple vase where you just make that dot in the middle and make a line that goes to the top. It is up to you. Let's see if I'm happier with this vase or this one I just made. And that's the one I just made. And I think I like this face. Let's see how it's going to look on my background. It looks pretty good. So now I think I'm ready to go ahead and glue. Now that my vase is done, you might have noticed a little something different about my vase. I didn't like that the paper I chose was so similar to my background. And I really wanted to emphasize or make my vase stand out. So I just outlined it. You don't have to do that, but if you notice that your vase is blending in with your background, think about a way that you could make it really stand out. For me, that meant outlining. For you, that might just mean drawing us delicate design or pattern on your vase. Now let's talk about how to create flowers. We have this cool new tool in the art room. This great thing has tons of different circle shapes on it for you to trace. So now, you can just pick out some colors that you think would be beautiful for flowers. And I picked these. I liked that they contrasted my background nicely. And what I'm going to do is just kind of stack them together. And I know that I need a large couple of circles and small couple of circles. We're going to be creating concentric circle flowers. So I need some big and some small. And you know that I like to do a bunch of stuff all at once because it saves time and energy. So I've stacked a bunch together. And I think what I'm going to do is start with the big circle. And notice that when I put my tracer on there, my template, I put it as close to the edge as possible because I'm trying not to waste paper. Somebody else who comes to art might be able to use all the rest of that paper. And I'm really helping them out by conserving or saving the paper by tracing as close to the edge as I can. There's one traced. Boom. Did you see that? That's so awesome. And I'm going to trace a small one. Just put your tracer on your paper. Get it close to the other one. Hold it really still with one hand. Put your pencil inside. It's like your pencil's going around a racetrack. There we go. Around and around. And boom. Now... If it's too hard for you to cut a couple of papers at once, probably not four for me, but I have two right here, I can do that. If you can't, then you might just have to trace again. So I've got them stacked. I'm holding them really still with one hand. I'm doing my very best to stay on my line, cutting neatly. Notice that my cutting hand doesn't really turn. It doesn't turn with the paper. My hand that doesn't really do much of anything, no offense hand, it's doing all the work right now by rotating those circles as I cut. So now I have two big circles. I'm just going to lay them on here, just kind of see what my composition is going to look like. Okay, okay. And now I'm going to set about cutting this one. Circles cut. 
cut out, you may get one sticky backed flower. That's right. You can get one of your choice. And I say one because this, when you have just one, will create a little bit of contrast and more interest. Not only that, but it'll make it so that there's enough for everybody in the school who's working on this project to have a flower too. So pick one out where you like the shape and you also feel like it goes well with your colors that you've picked out. So I got a couple just to see. That's not contrasty enough. This actually is a little bit too big for the background, but that could add some interest. You know what? I really like this combo, and you're going to need at least two flowers in your composition, at least meaning you could always make more. So right now I'm trying to decide which ones I would like to use. Let's see. I don't know. I think I'm going to go with this, but if I have room, I'd like to also add this one. So when you have your flowers picked out, what you can do is if it's sticky back, just peel it off just like a sticker. If it does not peel off, then don't worry about it. Just put glue on top that will work too. You don't have to use it like a sticker if it's not going to cooperate. All right, now that I've got this peeled off, I think I'll set this one here. And for this one, I can see pencil lines here and I'm kind of picky. I don't like seeing my pencil lines. So what I'm going to do is have that side with the pencil lines be the back. I'm just gonna put a couple dots of glue. And I think I will go ahead and do an extra one too. Middle with a circle could use any shape you want to. I'm going slowly, I'm going carefully. I'm being thoughtful about the designs and the patterns that I want to make. And when I run out of ideas for one, I can take a break and switch to the other flower. I think it's always a good idea to have a variety of color. are all done. Again, I have to figure out my composition. So I'm going to figure out the placement of things. I think I want some of my flowers to be overlapping. I'm also going to need to start working on some leaves. So I've got some bright green paper that I think will show up nicely. <music> that I'm happy with my composition and my masterpiece, I'm just gonna do a couple more things. First of all, I think I want to make the background a little bit interesting or more interesting. So I'm gonna take an oil pastel and just kind of color the background a little bit. Notice I'm not holding it as if I were coloring or drawing. I've got it on its side and I'm just kind of filling in any little spots I see just gently. I'm just going over it and filling in any little empty spots. There we go. Now, if your masterpiece is complete and you've created a beautiful pattern, a symmetrical vase, you've used all sorts of designs to make your flowers, your concentric flowers look fabulous, then you can enter the wonderful world of puffy paint. Friends, remember, when we're using puffy paint, you need to make sure that you do this once while the cap is still on it. Twist the cap off. Once the cap is off, you definitely have to have a scrap paper to test it only three times with small dots. 
If you squeeze and nothing happens, then it's probably clogged and you should probably get a bottle. But if it works great, then you're good to go. You may only do dots or very short lines. Puffy paint is for accents only, meaning you only use a little bit of it, not a lot. You've already made an amazing design. This is just sprinkling a little bit more awesome on what's already terrific. So be wise when you're using the puffy paint because you know your mean and rotten art teacher will be the first to take away the puff if you use it incorrectly. Make sure to practice that three times. And uh, there we go. I can't wait to see how beautiful your flower, still life, inspired by our artist, is going to turn out. You guys are such amazing, creative artists. I know you will do a beautiful job.